The top story of this bulletin is coming in from, from the United States of America. There's been a massive security breach at uh, Donald Trump's rally in Pennsylvania. Now, here's what happened. Remember, ahead of the presidential elections in the USA, there are election rallies that are taking place. A video caught on camera when the former U.S. President, uh, Donald Trump, who's also now set for a rerun, as he's hopeful, was addressing a large crowd. Multiple gunshots were immediately heard. The banks disrupted the rally prompting the Secret Service agents to swiftly cover Trump and try to rush him off of stage. We are told that the suspected shooter has been neutralized, but one attendee also has lost life and two are critically injured in this. And despite the chaos, Donald Trump, with clearly a right ear bleeding, was seen pumping his fist in the air. And with that fist pump appears to be saying, fight, fight. And then he was escorted out by the Secret Service. FBI has confirmed that it was an assassination attempt. And uh, now the reactions that are coming in with investigation demands on this, while the Secret Service has formally also notified the FBI. Now, President Joe Biden, meanwhile, has condemned the life-threatening attack on his Republican rival and predecessor. This evening we had what we're calling an assassination attempt against our former president, Donald Trump. It's still an active crime scene. As I mentioned, we have a number of agents on scene. We also are working closely with other federal agencies, our state partners, and our local police partners as well. Again, at this time, we are not prepared to identify who the shooter is. Uh, we are close to that identification, and as soon as we are 100% confident in who that individual is, we will share it with the press. Uh, law enforcement, I believe, acted heroically quickly identifying and, uh, and, and neutralizing the threat, as well as responding to assist the various victims. At this time, we have no reason to believe that there is any other existing threat out there. Uh, we are doing everything we can uh, to make sure that uh, this is thoroughly investigated. I'm very upset. It's, it, I can't say for sure who's behind this, but I'll tell you what. It's only going to cause more division in this country because of the people that support President Trump. And it's only going to make people hate Joe Biden even more, whether he had anything to do with it or not, and whether the Democratic Party had anything to do with it or not. It seems that they'll do anything to remain in power. And I'll tell you what, it's only going to cause more division in this country. And there's enough already, you're going to see more. I feel like the nomination is coming up on Monday, and I feel like... That they, they don't want him. They don't want this man to be president because he's trying his hardest to save America, and that's not what they want. They want America to fall. They're scared. Yeah, they're scared. You're right. Yeah. They're scared. Horrifying. I mean, I was. It, the shot, I mean, and then the stuff was coming off the side. Um, for people to do that, I don't know. It's just. I, I, it's stunning. It's absolutely stunning. It's just going to drive people to even be more for him. I mean, especially when. And that picture comes out. The, the Trump rally was a rally that he should have been able to can be conducted peacefully without any problem. But the idea, the idea that there's political violence or violence in America like this is just unheard of. It's just not appropriate. I mean, everybody, everybody must condemn it. Everybody. I'll keep you informed, and if I am able to speak to, the, to Donald, I'll, I'll let you know that as well. So this definitely is one of the biggest global stories right now. This was the big assassination bid at Donald Trump. It has been foiled, but it has raised a lot of questions. India Today, meanwhile, has accessed some information about this suspected attack on Donald Trump. Now, he was killed moments after the, uh, the bid took place, but the attacker officially has not yet been identified. We are told that uh, he is in his early 20s. And uh, this was very close, remember, because the bullets clearly grazed Trump in the ear. And perhaps here or there within a second could have caused and become more fatal. Now, what we are told is that from the attacker, a semi-automatic gun has been recovered and that he was apparently shot in the head after he tried uh, to assassinate the former president. Now, motive is not yet known about what led to this attack. The gunman was positioned on a roof of a manufacturing plant, which was right behind the audience where this election rally was taking place, which means about 120 meters barely from the stage where Trump was addressing supporters. 
The moment the U.S. forces sniper realized that Trump has been attacked, uh, they took aim, opened fire at the gunman, and then tried to secure also the former president. Take a look at what happened. Get down, get down, get down, get down. The FBI stands with the people of Butler County in western Pennsylvania and our hearts go out to the victims of this heinous act which occurred today. This is our community and I want to let the public know that the FBI has deployed a number of our resources including investigative agents, our evidence response team, bomb technicians, and we have additional resources coming from other field offices, as well as from FBI headquarters, including our evidence response. We have intelligence analysts as well, working from our field office in Pittsburgh, working feverishly to attempt to identify the individual who did this and any motives. Again, at this time, we are not prepared to identify who the shooter is. Uh, we are close to that identification, and as soon as we are 100% confident and who that individual is, we will share it with the press. But this has led to important discussions that are coming up, because at this point, it's not just about Donald Trump, he's a big name in himself, but also about, the, as, uh, as the senior leader uh, of uh, former president, possibly a future president, and the security around them. So what possibly was the motive of the attack on Donald Trump? Was the attacker a lone wolf or has links? But because he's been neutralized, it will be very difficult to confirm that. Now, link to the U.S. domestic politics or terror attack is what is being analyzed. What impact will the attack have now on the upcoming presidential elections? And big question that's also being asked from the investigative agencies. Did they fail to protect Donald Trump enough? Is there a glaring intelligence failure in this case? Take now, we've happened. been trying to get reactions also about what is the sort of discussion and comments are like currently in the USA. We also spoke with the sociologist, Professor Dr. Salvador Babanez, and listened in to what he said about this assassination bid. If you could put into perspective for us what this attack on Donald Trump means for uh, U.S. democracy. It doesn't particularly mean much for U.S. democracy. The United States has always been a very violent country. Political violence is in our heritage, in the very founding of the United States. Uh, it has been a while since an assassination attempt was made on a president or presidential candidate, but those last two attempts are not so long ago. Uh, president Ronald Reagan was shot in the early 1980s. Uh, by uh, an insane person who uh, thought it was his mission to kill the president, and Gerald Ford was shot in the 1970s. And those were both serving presidents. What this attack really represents is more a lapse in security than any particular change in American political culture. It's very unfortunate that U.S. political culture is so violent, but it has been a fact of life for 250 years now. Right. Also, if you could put into perspective for us, sir, the fact that it's not the first time that an assassination has uh, attempt has been made in, uh, on a former U.S. Uh, president. Could you put into perspective of, uh, of everything that we've seen in the past as far as either attempts being made or, uh, or assassinations rather be conducted? How does this then uh, paint a picture? 
Well, I already mentioned uh, Ronald Reagan and Gerald Ford. The difference is that after the Ronald Reagan assassination attempt, the security around the president was increased dramatically. So up until the 1980s, it was possible for ordinary people to get relatively close to a president or presidential candidate without having to go through uh, you know, extensive security checks. Uh, now there is an enormous security perimeter around the president or a major presidential candidate like Donald Trump. Uh, that's really what has changed and what has prevented the assassinations and assassin serious assassination attempts for the last uh, 40 years or so. It, it's the level of security, not a change in political culture. Now, there were reports from the Trump rally in Butler, Pennsylvania, that the members of the crowd had seen the potential assassin on a building opposite the podium. It does seem to be that the Secret Service did not fully secure all of the area with a, a clear line of sight to the podium. And there will be an investigation now into the appropriateness of the uh, appropriateness and the resourcing of the Secret Service uh, in protecting Donald Trump. I think what we can be certain is that looking from here on out for the rest of the campaign, there will be very heavy security indeed. Right, so the security cover expected to increase as you point out, sir. But as far as the perception of Donald Trump is concerned, strong images coming out. The yes. time that he goes down to the ground with his uh, bloodied ear, the time that he uh, you know, clinches his fist in the air and then says, fight, fight. How is the voter expected to perceive all of this? Let's remember Donald Trump is a showman. He actually was a reality television star before becoming a presidential candidate. And if you listen carefully to the audio tapes uh, from the event, you can hear Donald Trump telling the Secret Service a as he's on his way out. The first thing you hear is very amusing. It's, you know, let me get my shoes on. And you have to wonder why his shoes were off. I, I can only guess he was wearing loafers and they fell off in the scuffle. But the other thing is that when he stopped to put his head out of the Secret Service scrum and uh, bump his fist in the air, he actually, you can hear him on the audio asking the Secret Service to wait, 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 you know, don't take me off stage yet. I have one final thing to say. And that really reflects his, his own knowledge that this moment was for him, uh, frankly, political gold. He, he wanted to make the statement that he is indomitable, and he made that statement. He made it first with the famous mugshot photo. Photo. When, when most of us go in for a, well, most of us hopefully don't go in for a photo with the police, but if we did, if you've seen mugshots before, they're generally startled or blank or scared. The Trump mugshot was, you know, tough. You know, he was ready to, you know, he, had pre he had obviously practiced for that moment. And in the same way, he thought very, very quickly on his feet that he wanted to make a photo opportunity, and he made one. So we'll continue to bring you the details and developments in this case.